Hello, welcome to AMCI Saturday Study Session, or SSS. I'm Mrs. J, Curriculum Director here at AMCI, and I am delighted to present AMCI Lead Instructor, Ms. Tamika, along with her guest. Without further ado, let's get started. Take it away, Ms. Tamika. Hello, hello, good morning, coders. How are you? All right, I want to know that everybody's doing well. All right, they're all great. Everybody's doing well. I want to say good morning, Miss Chinwe. Good morning, Miss Chinwe. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? How has your week been? I think they're good. awake. Everybody's saying good morning. Okay. <laughs> good to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Chinway. It is always a pleasure to have her. I always tease her and I always will say her name at times, Ms. Chinway. <laughs> so it is a pleasure to have you, lady. And also I have with me this morning, Ms. Tina. Hey, Ms. Tina, come on and say hello to these coders. Good morning, coders. I'm looking at any of the day with you. It is a pleasure to have you as well, Miss Tina. Thank you. And I have someone that I know you all know. She decided to pop in. I told her she's like having my security blanket with me, Miss Rochelle. Hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Happy weekend. Oh my goodness, we have some really wonderful people here today, Miss Jamika. I'm so excited. Let's all have fun and solve some scenarios. What a better way to start a weekend, huh? <laughs> Thanks for having me, Miss Jamika. Yes, Miss Rochelle, it is my pleasure. I am thrilled to have you here. All right, guys, we are going to get going. All right, we're going to jump into it because we want to have plenty of time. So our copyright, CPT Copyright 2020 American Medical Association, all rights are reserved. CPC is a registered trademark of the AAPC. AAPC content found within this presentation is copyright of AAPC. Keyword concept, FTR, Chun, AMCI, Fab 7, Flip, Tap, are trademarks of AMCI. Oh, oh, are we ready? And good morning again to everybody. It is a pleasure to have you guys. Good morning, Ms. Cheryl, G Geneva, and Renata, and Dana, Crystal, Robin, Daryl. Are you guys ready to roll? All right, is everybody ready? Everybody's got their glasses. Yes. All right. Daryl's ready. Okay. Robin Crystal. There they go. I got to be sure you guys are peeled to the screen because I want you ready. And we're going to have all of our clocks set at two and a half minutes. And I'm going to call first to the floor to read for me this morning, Miss Chinwe. Good morning, everyone, again. And um, we'll read from the answers. A, 21325, B, 21310, C, 21315, and D, 21337. The patient presents today for closed reduction of a nasal fracture. The depressed right nasal bone was elevated using heavy reduction forceps, while the left nasal bone was pushed to the midline. This resulted in good alignment of the external nasal dosum. What CPT code is reported from, for this procedure? And you have two minutes or two and a half minutes to solve this scenario. Your time starts now. Thank you.
All right, coders, you know what that means. All right, we need you to get your answers in the chat. I see a few of you are still, still popping your answers in there. I want to give everybody a chance to put it in there before we do the reveal. All right, I think we are about ready and I see some great answers in there. So let's take a look at how we arrived at the proper answer, okay? So the answer is C and many of you found that to be true. And for those of you who just missed it, we're gonna show you why, all right? So we're gonna start with some, some key words. We have a closed reduction of a nasal fracture. It is the right nasal bone. Okay, we have heavy reduction forceps, the left nasal bone pushed to the midline. All right, so we're gonna start off here. Zeroing in on that, it is a closed nasal fracture. All right, so for code 21310, it is indeed closed. I like that, but it's saying that it's without manipulation. Okay, so can you tell me what word that you saw in that scenario that, that let you know that that's not a good code. Yeah, there you go, Robin. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I see in there, Daryl and Aisha. Yes, we have those heavy forceps and, and that bone was indeed pushed. Okay. W once we get the push going on, that's some manipulation. Okay. So we're going to take code 21310. That's off the board going to take a look at code 21315. Indeed, it is closed. It is a nasal bone fracture closure and it is without stabiliz stabilization. Okay. All right. I, I like that. I like that because here we go with stabilization that involves internal packing and external splints. Okay, so in case you're wondering like, well, what is stabilization and what's manipulation? Man manipulation, as you see, is, is if you're pushing it, you're moving it about, but the stabilization, that's most commonly if you're doing some packing and, and splinting of some things. Okay, so we didn't have any stabilization going on, so that's a good thing. That didn't happen. No mention of anything like that. All right, so we're going to hold that thought on that one, but take a look at code 21325. This is open treatment. You know what? Once you see open, and you should box these things in this portion of your book, once you see open, uncomplicated, that's all well and good, but take it off. As soon as you see open, because we are looking for a closed treatment, then you need to take it off. Yeah, Dana, I know that that stabilization could be confusing. That's why I put that note there. So you'll want to put that, you know, jot, jot yourself a note so you don't get stabilization and and the and the, the stabilization as well as the manipulation. You won't get it confused. OK. All right. So, yeah, not an open treatment immediately. Do away with that one. Take it off. Code 21337. It is indeed closed, but take a closer look. You got to be forensic. That's for nasal septal fracture. And so immediately you see that's nasal what we're looking for. That's septal. Take it away. All right. And that's how we get at code 21315. Simply those keywords, yes, it will drive you to what you need to be, where you need to be, where you got to go. All right. I hope that was helpful. If anybody needs a screenshot, you can take it. And then we're going to continue on into our next scenario. We got to get some stuff in, guys. All right, for the next scenario, I'm going to call Miss Tina. All right, coders, here we go. Okay, we're going to start with the answers. A31628, B31628 with 31623, C31629, 31632, and D31628 and 316 three, two times four. A 21 year old patient was seen for a transbronchial lung biopsy for of two separate lobes. One biopsy is taken in 
one lobe and four biopsies in the other lobe, what CPT codes or codes are reported? You have two minutes. All right, I think we're getting quite a few answers in there. Going to give you guys just a few more seconds. I think most of you guys have arrived at that answer. I see a lot of terrific things going on in there. All right, so let's take a look at this one, okay? So for this one, we have a 20-year-old. We have five transbronchial lung biopsies of two separate lobes one biopsy in one lobe and four biopsies in another lobe. All right, so the answer is indeed B. We're gonna take a look at how we got there. All right, so like someone said that chunning, it is gold. All right, so we're gonna start out with code 31622. This is for a bronchoscopy, all right? And then we have with the bronchoscopy, it is with transbronchial lung biopsy or biopsies. All right, there we go, there, single lobe, okay? So that's a good code there. So we're starting out pretty good. We, we do have a lung biopsy, we have one in one lobe, all right? But that's for single lobe, so that's good. Again, we have two separate lobes, so we've got to account for an additional lobe. So let's take a closer look at how we get there. All right, so 
I'm going to read this parenthetical guideline that when we have this code, which is code 31628, it should be reported only once. All right, regardless of how many transbronchial lung biopsies are performed, it should be reported only once. All right, but how do we account for the second lobe? Well, we're to report the transbronchial lung biopsies performed on the additional lobe using code 31632. Okay, so we need to we need to continue a little bit further. All right, so we're going to hold that thought with that one and we're going to move down to code 31629. All right. This again, it's a bronchoscopy. I want to um, bring your attention to this too, because if, if you've chunned it, which I know many of you have, then you know that this is a, indeed a code family. So again, we're still having a bronchoscopy, but for code 31629, this is with needle aspiration biopsy, and that's not what happened. We have a transbronchial, um, just a trans transbronchial lung biopsy here and so it's not with a needle all right so the 31628 we're taking away because it's only for the one lobe so that one's gone all right and for the 31629 we're taking that one away because it's talking about needle aspiration so that one we're going to take that one away all right now we're going to hold that thought, like I said, with that one, and we're going to follow our parenthetical guidelines. We're going to use this additional code, the 31632, all right? This is, there we go, with that trans lung, transbronchial lung biopsy for each additional lobe, that's the code we're going to use, but let's pay attention to these parenthetical guidelines. Again, they rule, all right? So, we know we are in the right spot because it's telling us to use code 31632 with the code 31628 and then zero in down here with the additional information here. All right. We can only use the 31632 only once regardless of how many transbronchial lung biopsies are performed. So the takeaway with this one, all right, you see right here, whenever you have lobe and then you have lobes with it, just like here and here, it doesn't matter how many biopsies are taken from the lobe, it's accounted for, okay? So we have one lobe and out of that one lobe, we had one biopsy, that's accounted for. With the second lobe, we had four biopsies. We're still covered because we have it's covered for one, a lobe or lobes, all right? So we're covered. You can only use it once. We are counted. You only have two lungs. So definitely that's the thing you want to hone in on. You have two lungs, but you have three lobes on one side. And you have three lobes on your right, two lobes from the left lobe, okay? All that's accounted for, all right? So you don't want to get tripped up. When you have that wording in there, you do not use a multiplier. So that's why that code 31632 times four, that would not apply. Okay, so that's how you arrive here at 31628 and 31632 for your answer. Okay, so you want to pay attention. Definitely any code language that you see, if it's accounting for biopsy with biopsies here, it's talking about lobe with lobes. You definitely you want to be aware that you do not need a multiplier in that case, okay? All right, so yes, someone just said, I just realized that, yes, you're coding for the lobes, yes, yes. So now, yep, you're reporting it only once. Yes, should be taken literally. And think about it, you only need it once. You only have the two lobes. So you got that code, that's, that's a lobe, that's a lobe. And regardless of what's going on, you already have enough for these. I'm sorry, I was referring up here. You have enough here for all the biopsies that you need, okay? So you got biopsies in that low, biopsy or biopsies, and up here, it accounts for it again, okay? So is that, does that make it really clear there? You got a lot going on with just that little bit of codes, but you got to really dig in there and really pull out the information you need so you don't get tripped up because that was tempting right there. That, I, I almost took that one. 
<laughs> I almost took that one. All right, so we're gonna move on, guys, and I'm gonna have Miss Rochelle come and do your next scenario. Yes, it tempted you, Miss Cheryl. You got it now. Oops, sorry, went too fast. Sorry. Do, do you guys need that screen? Thank you, Miss Tamika. Wonderful explanation. And I think I'm gonna go back here just to make sure everybody got their screenshot. If you need to, sorry about that. Went too fast. <laughs> Got way too excited. It's okay, Miss Rochelle. <laughs> Here you go, coders. If you need that screenshot, hopefully I got everything in. Because this is a good one. And it's really like Miss Tamika said, you can take this chance to, you know, chun this page well while you have it. Because Miss Tamika here got all these keywords, I would say the game changer stuff covered for you guys. So go right ahead. Again, thank you, Mr. Mika and coders. Yes, I do have a scenario for you and I'm going to have, I wonder if Ms. Chinway is okay with reading this one. It's a little bit long, Ms. Chinway, but I really appreciate yes, okay you with for it. your help. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rochelle. Okay, and we're going to start from the answers. A, 320982RT, 7700226, C, 3410, R, 0.7.9, R, 0.4.89, R, 4.7.81, R, 63.4. B, 32400RT, 7700226, C thirty four point nine zero C three two six zero seven R T seven seven zero zero two twenty six R twenty two point two D three two four zero five R T seven seven zero zero two twenty six C thirty four point one one A fifty five year old female smoker presents with cough hemoptysis slurred speech and weight loss. Chest X-ray done today demonstrates a large unresectable right upper lobe mass and brain scan is suspicious for metastasis. Under fluoroscopic guidance in an outpatient facility, a percutaneous needle biopsy of the right lung lesion is performed for histopathology and tumor markers. A diagnosis of small cell carcinoma is made and chemo radiotherapy is planned. What CPT and ICD-10 CM codes are reported? And coders, you have two and a half minutes to solve this scenario. And your time starts now.
Okay, coders, that is two and a half minutes. Again, thank you, Ms. Shen Wei, for reading the uh, scenario. And wow, you guys are doing great. Aisha, Andrea, Fatima, Robin. Wow, Michelle, great job. Giovanna, Dana, did you all use your chant for this one? Regina, Cheryl, Crystal. Because if you did really, if you look at this, you probably think, oh my gosh, there's a lot of codes to sort through. But really, truly, coders, when you are on that exam, don't get intimidated. You, we you probably heard us before, like the longer sometimes is the wronger. <laughs> so your approach has to be stick with your child, your keywords, and just apply the guidelines simply, straightforward. And that's what we're gonna do, okay? So if I look at my scenarios here, A does have a lot of codes and it also involves diagnosis. So which is good, um, you know, makes sense because it did ask us for CPT and ICD-10 CM codes there. So procedure and the diagnosis and, but really it's not so bad because my, that second listed code is pretty much given. So how I'm going to approach this? Well, I'm going to go over my keywords. So I have 55 year olds. I have a smoker cough, uh, hemoptysis, slurred speech and weight loss. We have chest x-ray, large unresectable right upper lobe mass, brain scan, um, suspicious for metastasis, fluoro, outpatient facility, percutaneous needle biopsy, right lung lesion. We have HES pathology and tumor markers. I actually had way too much here than I wanted to, but we have small cell carcinoma. I definitely have a diagnosis here. So that is already telling me something. So if you're with me in part two, that kind of gives away a little bit, right, coders? You have a definitive diagnosis there. And then we have chemo radiotherapy is planned. And that one is planned. So that did not happen today. So pretty much, if I the answer is going to be D, and a lot of you got it. And the pretty much 50-50, so we have B or D. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, remember in the keywords, we always tell you that, you know, you have to look at your CPT codes first. It always has to be your procedure codes because you all are here to become, you know, outpatient coders. So I know that diagnosis is pretty much a giveaway, but we always have to go through the CPT codes first. So we're gonna have to look at what we are coding for here, okay? Following along so far. So what are we coding for? Well, we are actually basically coding for the percutaneous needle biopsy of the lung lesion, correct? So if you are to code that, looking at these first listed codes, 32098, that is a code for a thoracotomy. What does a thoracotomy mean? It means that they actually open up the chest to do the biopsy of the pleura. Did that happen here? No. Your keyword that gives that away is that percutaneous, right? It's a needle biopsy that was performed. So 32098, that is an open procedure. And also, if you have your FTRs down here where your FTRs are supposedly, you know that that is for an open procedure. That is in that code range there, correct? So you may already have your chan here and you know that is for an open procedure. So that would actually eliminate A right off the bat, really, really quickly, right? Plus, of course, the air coding, that all that signs and symptoms there when you have a, a definitive diagnosis, right? So if you see that too, then that's really a good advantage. You really are, you know, that's gonna really help you out with time. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna look at B, three, two, actually I'm gonna, yeah, here it is, three, two, four, zero, zero. That is a code for a biopsy, but where? It's a percutaneous needle, but this is biopsy of the pleura. It's a different, body part than a lesion. It talks about a lesion here in the lung itself and not in the pleura. So this here, that keyword where that biopsy is, is going, the location of the biopsy makes it wrong. So that's going to eliminate B, okay? 
So that probably is where, you know, you kind of overlook that. So maybe if you want to right now, go ahead and um, add some notations there. This is for the pleura, okay? We're looking, they actually biopsied your, the lung itself, okay? So that leads us to 32405. This is it, biopsy, lung, or mediastinum percutaneous needle. All of our keywords here matches. Can you all see that now? Okay. Awesome. I have one got it. So I'm thinking you guys are following along. So, so we love this code. Um, it looks like we found it. Also, don't forget to sort through the um, any parenthetical guidelines here. And I do have one, but let's go ahead and look at 32607. Let's just deal with that one. That is a scope. That's a thoracoscopy, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and eliminate C. Now let's go back to 32405. Again, we'll like this code for the biopsy of the lung by percutaneous needle. And again, remember, you are gonna be tested with your parenthetical guidelines. So always make a habit to read it. it. Tells you here for radiological supervision and interpretation, you have to use 77002 already given in your answer choices there. So we like that. So we covered that as well. Now, finally, again, the diagnosis, you only get to code for that small cell carcinoma of the right lobe because, well, you have a definitive diagnosis, okay? And that's it simply. So no overthinking there. Straightforward, your answers are all checked out for answer D. So that is your answer. Now tell me coders if that makes sense to you. And let me know how you approach it when you were doing it. Did, you, did that try and help you out, those keywords? Okay, fantastic. All right, you guys are doing great. Some of you are saying Chan definitely helps, right? Perfect. Okay, so do you want to do another scenario with me? Fantastic. <laughs> me too, because I love to do it. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead and ask um, Miss Tina, would you like to read the scenario for us, please? And then we'll go through it. Um, let's have two and a half minutes to solve. Thank you. Okay. Um, we'll start with the answers. Um, 316, or A is 316-009A-V86-19-XA-B-is-31605-S1-70-XXA-V49-9XXA-B-49-9XXA-B-49-9XXA-B-49-9XXA-B-49-9XXA-B-49-9XXA-B-49-9XXA-B-49-9XXA-
All right, coders, that is time. Oh my goodness. I think we all have, we have 100% on this one. And the answer is B for BAM. <laughs> Oops. Oh, it didn't show up my answer first. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Let's go over those keywords first. We have sturgeon incision in the neck. We have cricothyroid membrane for emergency, tracheostomy, um, emergency room, tracheal crushing injuries, car accidents, passengers. So look at my scenario here. That makes sense. So I do have some injury codes there and I do have external causes codes there, but definitely what I'm really gonna be focusing on again is the CPT code. So I need to code for that tracheostomy, correct? So B for BAM, like I said, so great job, everybody. And let's go ahead and take a look here. So pretty much we have this go from this, you know, they're pretty close to each other. So we're gonna definitely gonna have to be looking at this closely and be forensic. So um, 31600 for answer A is going to be wrong because this is tracheostomy for a planned procedure okay this one is whenever they actually probably is going to be doing another procedure afterwards but this one is planned okay usually like therapeutic whatever that would be okay now in our case this was an emergency tracheostomy so that will be coded here from this family 31603 and 31605 and some of you are a little bit confused because as you can see, the pairing code is for transtracheal. Okay, what is transtracheal? That is across your trachea, that's in the trachea. While 31605 is in the cricothyroid membrane, that's a little bit up in your thyroid and cricoid area. So if you look it up in your Google, you will see there the difference. Now it tells us here in the, um, keywords near the cricothyroid membrane. It's talking about membrane coder. So if you are to really analyze it, would you be coding it in the transtracheal or would you be coding it in a cricothyroid membrane? Tell me in the chat. I know that near that is a little bit of tricky there, but really if we are talking about anatomy, so where would you be coding it? Would you code it in the trachea in, you know, they open up the trachea, did that happen? Or would you be coding it in the membrane? Would have to be the cricothyroid membrane, right? So we have a code for that and that would be your 31605. So that actually eliminates 31603. And here that keyword actually kind of like drives you to your answer there, okay? So everybody good on this one so far? Did that make sense? Okay, looks like everybody's following. Perfect. So all we need to do here uh, is eliminate, I have one more code, 31612, which is I'm gonna show here another clipping. 31612 is definitely wrong because that's for tra uh, tracheal puncture. So that is wrong there. Let's eliminate D. Now let's go back to B, just do our due diligence there. Make sure our diagnosis codes are correct. So we did have a crushing injury of the neck, which is coded as S17.0. Don't forget, um, just a teaching moment here, that requires for seven characters, you will need to add placeholder and definitely, because this is a car accident, this would have to be um, an A for your seven character for an initial encounter. So that checked out. Finally, your external cost code V49. If you look that up, that is for the car occupant, driver, or passenger. In our case, this actually this patient is actually a passenger, but doesn't matter. It would be coded for the same V49.9. Um, and then um, what else? Yeah, it also requires for seven character there. So that also makes sense that you have V49.9 XXXA. So Everything checked out for B as, I, as far as I can see. What do you guys think? A good, really easy, right? So hopefully you guys are learning something, but I think 
for this one, absolutely, you guys got it. So you probably didn't even need me go through that. But I think that's it for me. It's time for me to bring back over Ms. Tamika because she has some wonderful scenarios. You guys are doing great tonight. Well, today. <laughs> I'm so used to having class night classes, Ms. Tamika. So don't mind me. <laughs> are you all ready to go? Are you here, Ms. Tamika? I am here, Ms. Rochelle. I am wrestling over here with my screens, so bear with me, guys. I tell you, double screens are good until they give you trouble. So oh, I'm gonna no. <laughs> I can them. help you. Let me know if you All want right. to pass you let's this. Let's see. Screen. What's my next one is, uh, let's see. You're going to be on Bam. Here we go. 16. 16. Perfect. Okay. All right. So I've got to, I've just got to get it to do what I needed to do. <laughs> That's okay. But, okay, my, my screen is wanting to do what you just did. And I'm just like, Miss Rochelle, I already did that one. Oh, <laughs> okay, That's okay. I'm gonna, look, I'm going to click through and I'll be right where I need to be. You're right, welcome, Cheryl. My pleasure. It's been a All while right. since doing this Has one, so I'm a, happy I'm, to I'm be here. I'm glad that you're here to do it and to share with us. Thank you, Miss Rochelle. <laughs> All Do right, you want me so, to pass you the screen now, Miss Tamika? Oh, you got it. I, I got it. All right. Look, I was shuffling. It was like shuffling through virtual papers. <laughs> All right, guys. I am here and ready to go. And Miss Rochelle, she will continue to, to be with us throughout this afternoon. So we're going to jump right in for a little bit more. Okay. All right. So I'm going to have Miss Tina come and Take a read for me and then we'll get solving. Okay, we'll start with the answers. A, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, two, six, seven. B, three, one, two, five, four, three, one, two, five, six. C, three, one, two, five, six. D, three, one, two, six, seven. Patient was seen in the endoscopy suite for a diagnostic mancillary sinus otomy. During the sinus otomy, the provider observes small disease tissue which needs to be removed. The provider decides to perform a Maxillary anti anteriostomy. Sorry about that. The tissue was the tissue removed. Bleeding was controlled. The patient tolerated the procedure well. What CPT code or codes are reported? You have two and a half minutes, and your time starts now.
All right, coders, that is it. I see a lot of good answers. I see some folks saying that just a little, they're confident in the answer, but a little, this was a little bit tricky. But hey, I know that you guys are ready to learn and we're going to take a closer look. Many of you got it. And if you didn't quite get there, we're going to help you get there. OK, so no worries. All right. So we have the patient there in the nidoscopy suite. We have a diagnosis of maxillary. Di they're having a diagnostic maxillary sinusotomy. During the sinusotomy, the provider is going to observe some diseased tissue. It needs to be removed. So now the provider is going to perform a maxillary antrostomy with tissue removal. Okay, so our answer is in fact D. And we're going to start taking a look here. Okay, so let's get our forensic glasses on. When we look at code 31231, that is nasal endoscopy. Okay, diagnostic. All right, so the issue with diagnostic, and I know some of you might be saying, but hey, right here it says diagnostic maxillary sinusotomy, but as soon as that provider goes in with the endoscope and they're just looking around, think about it, you have to look and, and be sure of what you are looking at and diagnose something. And then if you start to do something, through that same scope, then now it's no longer diagnostic. Remember, he started out with that, but then when he was in there looking, he saw that the disease tissue, okay? And that's when he started to, to look around and say, hey, we got to remove some stuff. So now it's no longer diagnostic. Now it becomes surgical. So 31231, that's off the table. So how does that sound? Does that, does that, that make sense? So always remember that. That's true for any of your um, procedures that are done endoscopically, okay? So we're going to keep going for code 31254. Indeed, it is a nasal sinus endoscopy. It is surgical, but they're right there, ethmoidectomy. As soon as you zero in on the fact that that's what happened and that's not what happened in this particular scenario, then code 31254, that's gone. Okay, so again, we're that's why your keywords are key because you want to quickly eliminate answers and then you can spend your time with making sure that what you're left with is indeed correct. Okay, all righty, so here we go. Now we're gonna take a look at 31256. Okay, so this one is a nasal sinus endoscopy surgery, surgical with maxillary antrostomy. That's looking real good right there. Okay, so right, we're, we're going to hold what we've got, but not quite enough info to capture the whole procedure that's performed. And we have a more specific code that can go with it. And what does Mrs. J always tell us? What do we need to do? We have to code to provider certainty and specificity, and we have something that we can get just a little bit closer. So we're gonna hold on this. This, this, this is our parent code. That's another thing I want, want you to remember. So all of this is good, but let's take a look at, at this dependent code down here, okay? All right, so we're going to take code 31256 away because when we look down, and again, this will be circled because you've chunned that manual, we have with removal of tissue from maxillary sinus. There we go. Maxillary antrostomy with tissue removal. Okay, that is more specific. That's it. We're gonna we're gonna hold. We're gonna do. We're gonna do what we gotta do, and 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 go ahead and code that. We want to always remember our do nots. So we have the do not report the three one two five six and three one two six seven in conjunction with three one two nine five. Okay, so that doesn't apply in this case. We would always take a look if they apply with those parenthetical guidelines, but none of that is applying, and so we are going to in fact code for this. So the one thing too, I want you to always remember anything that precedes this, this semicolon, this is common code language for this whole family. So even though the parent code, it was close, but it didn't quite capture enough information because we had something better. So that's why you want to have this chund so you can get to 
provider certainty and specificity. So does that help everybody? I think most of you got it. If you didn't quite get there, do you see where you where you kind of missed it? Again, make note of when it is diagnostic. That's when we're just looking. But as soon as that provider starts to tinker and do something in there, it's surgical. Okay. And in this case, here we go. Surgical. That that was looking good, but wrong wrong procedure that was going on. But right here, it is surgical. It is maxillary antrostomy and removal of that tissue, okay? So everybody ready to keep moving, keep rolling. If you need to get a screenshot, you may, and then we're gonna keep on moving. All right, Miss Bettina, Dana, Crystal, I know many of you are ready to roll and we will take a look at just one more. I wanted to go over one that deals with lung transplantation before we move on to cardio, okay? So I'm gonna have Ms. Chinway come and do this one and then we're gonna keep rolling. Thank you, Ms. Chinway. Thank you, Ms. Namika. And we're gonna go straight to the answers. A, 32850, 32850, 32855-32855-32855-1, C, 32850-32855-2, 32855-50, D, 32850-32856-32853. A 27-year-old girl has been on the lung transplant list for months, and today she'll be receiving a left and right lung from an individual involved in an MVA. This person was dead on arrival at the hospital and is an organ donor. The donor pneumonectomy was performed by physician A, the backbench work by physician B, and the transplant of both lungs into the prepped and waiting patient by physician C. What is the correct coding for the removal? Physician A, preparation, physician B, an insertion physician C of the lungs. And you have two and a half minutes. Your time starts now.
All right, coders, how you doing? All right, I see answers coming in. And I, and I think that, that a lot of you are grasping what you need to do, okay? All right, I see some folks like, hey, I'm changing it, I'm changing it. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take a look. I just wanted to hit this one. I think many of you have it. And for those of you that weren't quite there, we're gonna get you there because I want you to be sure. All right, so we have a 27 year old a lung transplant list receiving a left and right lung, okay? Um, they are getting it um, from a person who was DOA, dead on arrival. And so we have physician A who's doing the, the back bench work, okay? Physician B is uh, doing the transplant of both lungs. And then the patient um, uh, was, blah, 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 blah. physician B is doing the transplant and physician C, okay, um, is prepping the waiting patient, okay? And so we have removal, physician A, prep, physician B, and insertion of the lungs, physician C. All right, so let's take a look. Our answer is indeed D, and many of you, you understood that, okay? So we're gonna break this down with the lung transplant, and you guys, I know you have it chunned. I know you got your FTRs, and yes, no second guessing, guys. <laughs> So we've got the lung transplant. We have three possible procedures, and I know you have it chunned. We know we can, we have removal, we have the back bench work, and the transplant, and you're only going to code those procedures which are performed, all right? So we take a look here. That's nice when we see, okay, all of them have these codes in common, so we're going to take a look at what that is and then go ahead and move on, okay? So obviously, we've got to start with code 32. 850, and that is indeed the removal. It's the donor pneumonectomy or nectomies, okay? When you see that, it's either they are removing one or both lungs, okay? And so remember, pneumonectomy, that is uh, referencing a lung, okay? So if you got to put it up there in parentheses, because sometimes your mind is moving and you're searching through codes quickly, um, you know that this is dealing with removal, okay, of the lung from the donor. So that takes care of that first code, all right? That's good, all right? We do know that we have back bench work. It tells us in our scenario, we have the back bench work or the prep that is by physician B. For code 32855, you might be saying, hey, it says back bench work. All of this common code language is good. It is indeed good, all right? but Look at there, unilateral. And what did this patient have? What, how, how, what was the, the back bench work? What did they perform it for? That's right. That's right, Michelle, Andrea. Yes, both lungs, bilateral, correct. It tells us left and right. And then it goes on down here further and says both lungs. Therefore, we can take off code, code the codes in line B for 32855 because it's what this was not unilateral. Okay, we can take it off also for line C. You see right there, they tried to sneak it in with the code 32855 times two. No need for a modifier. A good, a good way to, if you're like, do I need to, do I need to, not a modifier, I'm sorry. No need for the multiplier because in our code language, it's taking care of what we need. This one is unilateral. OK, you don't take the unilateral and multiply it by two in the wording of the code. It gives us bilateral. All right. So that's what we're going to use. No need to start multiplying and stuff. OK, so we know that this code is good. Again, your code language, as long as the common code language of this parent is good, then everything that follows that applies. And this is our code. So we have code three, two, eight, five, six. All right, on both accounts. Now, we got to take into consideration what happened when they insert it, because right now these two are tied. So we got to take a look at these final codes and break this tie. We're going to look at code 32851, which is in our answer line A. This is indeed the long transplant, but it's for a single. See, they're trying to get you. They're trying to get you. We know it's told us twice, left and right, both lungs. So code 32851, that is no good. All right. So just take it off. All right. 
it it's telling you single and we can't make it a, a bilateral uh, procedure by adding that times two, all right? But we can go to a different code if we look at 32853, again, lung transplant, double, bilateral, sequential or in block. Boom, there it is. And that is our code. And if you're wondering, what about that? It wasn't mentioned. If the provider didn't say it, it didn't happen. And that's why that is our code. And so D is our final answer. All right. So how are we doing coders? So out of these particular scenarios, again, like Mrs. Like Mrs. Rochelle said, you guys, you have the tools to do it. Make sure it's chunned properly and just take your time. As soon as a code doesn't fit, if it's the first code or the second one, take it off. Don't, don't keep rummaging through the rest of it. Take it off and move on. All right, so we're doing good. I think you guys are doing fantastic. I'm going to have Miss uh, Rochelle come on and she's going to she's going to teach you a bit. We're going to change gears a bit and move on into cardio. OK, thank you, Miss Rochelle. Thank you, Miss Tamika. Great explanation and coders. Are you ready for cardio? All righty, so let's do it. I know you got this code. Let's start with, I would say, probably you're going to get this all down pat. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and read this one for you guys. We have A, 33254, B, 33255, C, 33256, and D, 33259. Maze procedure is performed on a patient with atrial fibrillation. The physician isolates and ablates the electric paths of the pulmonary veins in the left atrium, the right atrium, and the uh, atrioventricular annulus while on, uh, on cardiopulmonary bypass. What CPT code is reported? Coders, I'll give you two and a half minutes. And your time begins right now. Good luck. Okay, okay, it's raining, raining answers already in the chat. 
Wow. And hello, everybody who just joined us. Seems like our numbers are growing. We're glad you're here. So let's go ahead and go over the scenario. So we have the answer is C, and I'm seeing a lot of C's coming through. So great job, C for great coders. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. And then if you miss it, don't worry, because we will have another look at this together. And for sure, you're going to know where you did wrong. So, and as always, it's, this is the perfect place for us to make mistakes so we can learn from it. So we have maze procedure, atrial fibrillation, isolates, ablates, electric path, pulmonary veins, left atrium, right atrium, atrioventricular analysis, cardiopulmonary bypass. So those are the keywords. And um, really, if you look at your answer choices there, all we need to do is just be forensic and know which type of procedure is the matching one for our scenario. Now we're coding for a maze procedure there. And um, if you look closely, so all those things are really you know, relevant to coding. So if we are going to look at your answers first, and oh, I messed up, I was gonna ask you guys. The first thing you should be eliminating is, and I saw somebody, tell me that in the chat and I'm so impressed because if you got that down you know straight your eye on that one then it means that you guys are really learning and that's really a great advantage on your exam the add-on code right 33259 that is an add-on code and even and if you look this is a maze procedure but this particular code you would only use this if this is added to a primary procedure Okay, so you cannot just code a uh, add-on code as a standalone code. It has to come with a, a primary procedure. Hence, there is like a plus sign in front of it. Okay, so D is eliminated. Now we're going to keep looking. 33254 is going to be wrong because this is for a modified maze procedure. So if you are going to, if you haven't done so yet, just make sure that you underline this is for a modified for our scenario we are just simply coding for a maze procedure there so we're going to eliminate a three three two five five here we are this is the operative tissue ablation and reconstruction of the atria extensive maze procedure there the difference is whether or not there was a cardiopulmonary bypass performed and by the use of our keywords there we know that B is going to be wrong because indeed, during the maze procedure, they did um, perform the cardiopulmonary bypass, okay? So C is your answer. And if you got it, great job. Again, if you miss it, now is your chance. You are not going to miss this again later. If you come across scenario like this. So go ahead, I'll give you some time to do a screenshot. And I'm gonna do one more scenario with you, and then I'll turn you back over to Ms. Tamika, if that's okay. Are we good? Hi, Ms. Josie. Good to have you here. All right, so let's do it. Ooh, and I have some really nice notations there from Ms. Tamika. <laughs> so here's the next scenario. Can I ask Ms. Tina, if you could read this one for us, please? Okay, coders, um, um, I'm gonna read the answers. A, three, six, five, six, one. B, three, six, five, six, three. C, three, six, five, six, zero. And D, three, six, five, five, eight. A physician was, a, phys ugh, a physician placed a central, in, in, centrally inserted tunneled central venous access device with a subcutaneous pump in a seven-year-old patient. You have two minutes to complete this, two, min two and a half minutes to complete the scenario and your time starts now.
K coders, I think I forgot to put in the time. <laughs> so just by looking at your answers here, it looks like you guys are ready. But I'll go ahead. If you are still working on it, I'll give you a few seconds. That means I'm going to shout you out here. We have some great answers coming through. We have Giovanna, Cheryl, Dana, Michelle. Woohoo! Great job. Did you use the FTRs for this one? Daryl, of course. Fatima. Fantastic. I, I'm loving this. Okay, so that should be a good time. And I'm seeing some of you are changing answers too, which is good. Okay, so the answer for this scenario is B. And a lot of you, like I said, got this. And um, if you missed it, let's go ahead and have another look. So we're coding for a central inserted central venous subcutaneous pump in a seven-year-old patient. Now, I do not have my FTRs with me here, but you should have it with you. So you should have written down your FTRs along this, but basically looking at this scenario and this code series, I know that I'm definitely gonna have to be careful with my, um, with the age, right? Because it's very age driven and be very forensic at what type of catheter or device has been used for this procedure, correct? All right. And I think you guys did that. So we're coding for a centrally, so meaning it has to be in the chest area, centrally, a tunneled central venous, and it's a venous device, particularly a subcutaneous pump on a seven-year-old patient. So all those keywords really is going to drive you to the correct answer. Looking at 36560, that is an insertion of a tunneled, centrally inserted catheter, venous catheter access device. Now tell me coders, what gave away on this one? What made this one wrong? Tell me in the chat. Oh, wow, Meredith, that's great. Yes, Crystal, Dana. Yes, Meredith, and the age. So this one is for a port and young for younger than five years of age. So this here, just by looking at that pairing code, already eliminates your answer A, as well as your answer C. A and C, right? Because they're the same family. So even though 365, Six one would be good as far as the age, because this one is age five years or older. Again, because this is for a particular type of device, it's for a subcutaneous port, so that actually eliminates them both. So great forensic coders. All right, so now that we eliminated that, we're gonna keep looking at your answer here. 36557 is again wrong because this one here is for a um, tunneled centrally inserted central venous catheter, but this is for without subcutaneous port or pump. So that's definitely wrong because we know this, you know, they use pump for this one, right? So that would be eliminated for D. So now we're left with B and looking at B here, the code is 36563, insertion of a tunneled centrally inserted central venous access device with subcutaneous pump. So there you go. That's what we're looking for. And your answer is B. So if you haven't shunned this well, again, I always go back to chunning, especially for cardio. <laughs> it really kind of gives it gives a little bit of like uh, support if you have your chun. <laughs> now, also, if you look at your page 274, there's also a very nice chart that you can use if you are very visual like I am. I like using the chart. So basically here, again, using your keywords and your FTR to guide you, you need to know, you know, what type. So in our case, in our scenario, previous scenario, it was a central tunneled with pump for a seven year old. So all the way down here on your first column and the rows would indicate for a catheter without imaging, you have catheter with bundled imaging and then we have for devices. So we're gonna be focusing here on the device because we did have a central venous device with pump. And then the, the um, columns here indicates, you know, the types 
Okay, so in our case, we were coding for a tunnel with pump and it was a device. So that actually gives us 36563. And if you notice that code, whether you're coding for central tunnel, uh, tunnel with pump, or at any age, it's still the same code, 36563. So I would get, you know, if I were to use this chart, I'd like to do this. I use this and then I, I put in where which one matches my keywords. And then I would always just go look back, just, you know, confirm that code, that code description. See if you're not missing anything, especially any parenthetical guidelines or anything like that. But for this particular code, it's really straightforward. So I could just easily use that too to arrive at my answer very quickly. Okay, so whatever works for you guys during the exam, just go for the fastest and most accurate one, okay? Do we have any questions? And I'm having some aha moments in the chat. This is great. That's what we're here for. All right, I think I'm ready now to turn you over to Ms. Tamika. Thank you, Ms. Rochelle. They are doing it. I tell you, how are you guys feeling? Do you just take a breath? Because, hey, we're only, what, about an hour and a half in, uh, time in it. And, hey, you got to get your stamina up for this exam. So are we ready to move on to our next one? I hope you guys are. You guys are doing fantastic. All right. I am going to have Miss Chimway come and do some reading. Good to hear you're hanging in there with me, Miss Crystal Fatima Giovanni. You guys are amazing. All right, Miss Chimway. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going straight to the answers. A33500. B33530. C. 33496 D 33496593530 A month after David's cardiopulmonary bypass he is experiencing chest pain and presents to his cardiologist David's doctor agrees that he needs a reoperation to repair the dysfunctional prosthetic valve how would you code this procedure and you have 2 minutes i think on this Thank you.
All right, guys, I see lots of terrific answers coming in. I think we're getting close on time. I'm not sure I usually start my clock as well. So we have some checks and balances going on, but I still see a few answers coming in. So I'll give you a few moments more. You guys are, many of you are just spot on. And so I don't think that you guys are, 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 are being fooled not one bit. Not one bit. And so for some of you that that got it and or might maybe thinking, eh, I got it, but I need to be clear of why I got it. <laughs> hey, I got something for you. All right. So we have a month after the cardiopulmonary bypass. This patient is experiencing chest pain. And so they presented to the cardiologist for a reoperation to repair the dysfunctional prosthetic valve. All right. So your answer is D, and we are going to take a look at why, okay? We're going to get you there. We're going to get you to why the answer is D. So we're going to start out with code 33500. It is repair of coronary arterial venous or arterial cardiac chamber. And we're not repairing anything like that, okay? So we can just simply, with this code, we can match up with what our keywords are. We are looking for a repair of a dysfunctional prosthetic valve, okay? And so everything about this code, none of those things happened, okay? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this code, 33500, we're going to take it off, okay? That one's gone. All right, let's continue on. We see this code, 33530. What is the problem with this code right off? Now, the the wording sounds good. Reoperation, coronary artery bypass procedure or valve procedure more than one month after original operation. It tells you right there in it, though, that you have to list it separately, but it's in addition to the code for the primary procedure. And, and that thing is hanging out there all by itself. It's almost like when your children, they're, they're, they're almost independent, but not quite. They can't stand out there by, himself, by themselves. And, and that code right there is looking good, but it's an add-on code. So that one is off the table. Okay, so yeah, you guys, no fooling you guys. I see you, Andrea, Fatima, Dana, Argentina. Yeah, it's an add-on code. So, you know, as soon as you are going through quickly and you see an add-on code and either it is listed first or by itself, get that thing out of there, okay? All right, so we're going to continue on. We have a reoperation. It's a month after, okay? And so that's another reason why this is a good code because it's even taking that into consideration with that. The only problem is this can't be by itself. So we're going to move along, all right? And it gives you some instruction here as well that with this code, we've got to use it in conjunction with the, some other codes. So we'll move along, though, to code 33496. It is indeed repair of non-structural prosthetic valve dysfunction with cardiopulmonary bypass, okay? So all of those things happen. We're having a repair indeed of that dysfunctional valve. The, the, the patient is um, having the, the cardiopulmonary bypass and right here, okay, we have that with separate procedure, okay? So meaning when you see separate procedure, it means that this, particular procedure, it is often bundled. You wouldn't separate it out unless it were necessary, okay? And in this case, okay, we wouldn't code it just by itself because right here, although it, it could be if it weren't part of a more in-depth procedure that would include that, that particular procedure, but here for reoperation, we're going to use that code 33530 in addition to the 33496. Okay, so that lets you know because of that, we're going to take that one off. Okay, so it could stand alone, but often because of, because of this particular parenthetical guideline, we need to use it in addition to that code. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, this one can't stand alone because it's an add on. This one, it's not, it's, it's not able to just be coded by itself because we need to use it in addition to this 33530. Does that make sense? I know sometimes you read it and you're just like, mm, okay, so 
Does that make sense? These two codes need each other. All right. So that that's the, the plain and simple truth. They need each other. So now you see here too, where it tells you here in this parenthetical guideline that we need to use 33530 in conjunction with those codes that follow. And indeed, we have the code 33496 right here. Okay. So there are a lot of different ways that you can, you know, erase or, or get rid of several of these codes that weren't correct. This one just wrong procedure straight out the box. This one add on code can't stand alone, but the wording is good. So you just got to put a little tick mark there and you look down here. You could have even read it with this parenthetical guideline at the ah, I see that right there. And so, you know, boom, boom, that's gone. And then you're just double checking yourself. OK, how we feeling, guys? How, how we feeling on that one? OK. Is everybody OK with that one? If you need to get a screenshot, you can. Or just definitely with this parenthetical guideline, with these two codes, I would definitely make myself a note, OK? Definitely hone in on that. And particularly with this one, when it, when it involves the reoperation, OK? Reoperation, a lot, of, a lot of good stuff in there, OK? All right, so we're going to keep on going. And we're going to start in with this next uh, scenario, give you guys yet some more practice. And I'm going to have Miss Tina come to the floor and read us out. Thank you. OK, we're going to start with the answers. A, 36215 with 75605, modifier 26, 36200. 75605 modifier 26 C 36221 and D 36222 In the cath lab physician places a catheter in the aortic arch from the right bem bem bemal artery punctures to perform an angiograph Graphy. Fluoroscopy imaging is performed by the physician. What CPT code or codes are reported? Two and a half minutes and your time starts now.
All right, guys. OK, I see everybody's really working hard on this one. And this one, this one kind of got quite a, quite a few of you and that is OK. All right, this, this is the place to get clarity. All right, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and just jump right in, all right? We have a catheter. It's placed in the aortic arch from the right femoral artery puncture. And we're gonna perform an angiography. We have fluoroscopic imaging that's performed, okay? So that catheter is ultimately gonna go into the aortic arch. Okay, your answer is going to be C. All right, so um, for those of you that are a little bit a little bit confused on it, like I said, we're going to get some clarity here. The one thing I do want to point out to you is that the catheter is is ultimately going to go into the aortic arch. Um, the thing that used to sometimes get me, okay, you read this. The physician places the catheter in the aortic arch from a right femoral artery puncture. So what this is, the femoral artery puncture, that is where the, the catheter is first inserted, okay? So that's not where it's ultimately going to go. You've got to, you've got to have a point of entry, and that's what that is, okay? So don't confuse it with that. You've got to, they're starting out in that artery in order to get to the aorta and then start looking, okay? Does that, does that make sense, okay? So you're going to start there. But that is your point of entry, okay? So we're starting there, but we're ultimately we're gonna we're gonna continue on to the aortic arch. All right. So selective catheter placement. I think seeing the femoral artery puncture that sort of throws you because then you're like, okay, they left it. No, that was how the catheter got inserted. That's how you you started. Okay, so, but you went to the A order. So selective, as soon as you see that, because actually once it's inserted and gets into the A order, it doesn't leave. So anything that is selective, which are codes 36215 and 36222, those, they would not apply. Okay, so that's selective, that's gonna be gone. And the 36222, that goes away too. Okay. All right. So I'm going to keep on going. I, I put this here because I wanted to show you guys something when you start talking about um, there. Okay. For, for one of the wordings you're going to see in one of the code, in some of the code language that I'm going to show you, you'll see cervical, um, cervical vertebral arch. That here is still part of the, the aorta. This is the uh, aortic arch, and this is a specific area on the arch, okay? So I just wanted you to know that because when you start seeing all these other things, you're like, well, what about the aortic arch? This is part of the aortic arch. It's just a specific area right here, okay? But it is still in this aorta. It has not left. It didn't go left. It didn't go right. It is still in this aortic arch, okay? All right, so we're going to continue on. So we have 36200, that is in fact the introduction of the catheter into the aorta, okay? So we're gonna need a, a little bit more than that, okay? So that's just the introduction. And then we have here, aortography, all right? Now aortography is when it stays there and then you, you get some pictures going on, okay? From in, in the aorta, but here we have non-selective because this is just accounting for the introduction okay but when we look here we have uh oh i clicked something on my on my screen <laughs> and now it's record me hi yeah yeah miss rochelle I um you, you i it, it's okay go ahead and go back to where the controls are miss demika and okay try and click on i think that's called subtitles i don't know i, I know. forgot what i don't called. even know how i got there i did that one time in my class oh, oh no. my goodness i'm just like I'm about to <laughs> think they have that mean now you oh, see it now it's like a yeah, keyboard there see it. is it see it's i'm like not a seeing it keyboard okay i can go ahead yeah, because uh, I, I, I keep talking, but I can't. Uh, yeah, grab it, grab it for me, Miss Rochelle. 
I apologize, coders. I tell you what, I'm moving right along and my screen's just doing its own thing. There it goes. I can be Thank your hand, Ms. Jamika, so you can okay. go on. All right. Thank you, Miss Rochelle. What would I have done without you? Probably shed tears. I would have had to just keep talking without any clicks. <laughs> Okay, so code 36200, that is introduction of the catheter into the aorta, okay? But we need to uh, do a little bit more than that, okay? So we're going to take that one off, and then the 75605, that's for aortography. And if you look here, just with that code, look again, those parenthetical guidelines, look at that for non-selective angiography, because they're talking about an aortography. We need an angiography, all right? So for the non-selective angiography of the extracranial carotid and or cerebral vessels and the cervical cervical uh, vertebral arch, that's why I showed you that picture. We're going to use 36221, all right? So I use that picture so you know you're still in the aortic arch. So it's telling us, although that's not it, we need this code, 36221, non-selective catheter placement. All of these other things apply, and that's what we're trying to get to. We have our angiography of the cervical vertebral arch. That's exactly what happened here. We have the catheter in the aortic arch, okay? We're performing an angiography. And that's what we need, okay? And like I said, I just showed you that picture prior, just so you know that cervical vertebral arch is indeed part of the aortic arch. It did not leave the aorta, okay? And selective is, think of it Thank this Thank you way. for watching an AMCI exclusive presentation. And it goes into the aorta. As long as it does not leave the aorta, it's non-selective. But as soon as it leaves the aorta and goes to say, the femoral artery or vein, or it goes up into just any other vein when it leaves, or artery, when it leaves and goes into another artery, then it has, it's selective, okay? So now that catheter is selecting someplace else to go, all right? So again, stays in the aorta, non-selected. And you might want to just write yourself a little note. And again, you definitely want to chime this area, non-selective or selective, okay? So that, so that you're clear because that right there, that that's game changing. Okay. That is very, very game changing. You gotta, you gotta know whether or not that, that catheter left the aorta. Okay. So does that, does that make sense, Miss Cheryl? Okay. Cause I, I know that used to hang me up too, particularly when you start talking about how the catheter was inserted, the point of entry, that's different. Okay. All right. All right. So how is everybody feeling? We have just a few more minutes. You know what? You have to, with some of it, you have to let it simmer and perhaps go back. And then you can listen to Mrs. J's lectures. And then you just, you have to just kind of let it simmer. Some, some coding concepts take a little bit more time to just kind of resonate with you and then just just let it simmer and then definitely continue to to work through your coding scenarios and ask questions okay all, all of your instructors and everything everybody's here okay so to help you along the way i'm gonna call this wonderful team to the floor that is it for me guys thank you for sharing your saturday with me i hope that this has been beneficial for you guys and remember yes please take a minute and just fill out the survey on your way out. Let us know what we can do to enhance your learning experience. Okay, ladies, that's it for me. And I'm going to give it to these beautiful women to just get you guys farewell. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for being here this morning and for spending time here. And I know that it's going to be it's gonna get better and better. We are all learning. It's a wonderful place to be. Thank you and wish you the best. Great coding today, um, everyone. Have a great weekend. You too, Miss Tina, Miss Chinway, and of course the lady of the hour, Miss Tamika. Great scenarios. Thank you for bringing us those wonderful scenarios, and we got a little bit of practice. So, coders, I think you all are the stars. So keep practicing, and hopefully you'll be back for another SSS next week. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye. Bye, Miss Tamika. 
Bye, Miss Rochelle. Bye, Miss Tina. Uh, Thank you for watching an AMCI exclusive presentation in partnership with AAPC. Until next time.